All right, everyone. So for today, uh, we're going to use our, our WordPress sites, and we're going to add plugins to them. So the first thing you want to do is you go to your web browser and go to your WordPress site. Not the WordPress.com, but the one that you got from GoDaddy. So remember, your site is in the format, uh, whatever your your company is, uh, mine's Victor's art dot info, and then slash WP admin. So whatever your particular website is, slash WP admin. That's your default login screen. You can get to it, of course, if you log into GoDaddy first. There'll be a screen in there somewhere that says log into WordPress. But this is the direct way to get to it. So go to your address, slash WP dash admin. And then log in. There were a lot of logins that we talked about last time, and it may be sometimes a little difficult to figure out which is which, but here it's going to ask you for your login for WordPress. Remember, you had a login for GoDaddy, you had a login for your cPanel, you had a login what else? your email, a bunch of them. Perhaps write them down. But uh, you're going to need here to log into your WordPress. Your GoDaddy WordPress. Your self hosted WordPress. That's the more correct term. Your self hosted WordPress. Because you don't need to have uh, your account on, on GoDaddy. You can have it anywhere you want. And so the more proper term is your self hosted WordPress. So go ahead and log into your self hosted WordPress. Now we're not going to completely abandon the WordPress.com. Just a moment. We're not going to abandon the WordPress.com because actually we're going to link the two. Your WordPress.com and your self-hosted, and we'll talk about why. Question. I, I thought that one, I don't like here, but it does not give me the login. Just to confirm, you're going to the address right there, wp-admin. So our self-hosted sites look pretty much the same, the dashboard and so forth looks pretty much the same as the uh, WordPress.com, but the big difference is, if you haven't noticed, on the left side here, we've got a new category, plugins. Plugins are like mini apps that add extra features to your WordPress. So click on plugins. That will show you what current plugins we have, and uh, we we have a few already built in. So click on plugins and it'll show you here the installed plugins. There's something called Akismet and then there's uh, that one's uh, not active. The button there says activate it. GoDaddy quick setup is active and it says deactivate. There's one called Hello Dolly limit login attempt. So these are mini apps that give you more features to your WordPress site such as this one that says limit login attempts. This will protect you a little bit by preventing people from logging into your site. If you try to log in like three times in a row with a wrong password, it'll prevent them from logging in for some amount of time or something. So that's a way for protection. Uh, it came for free with, uh, with, our Word uh, with our GoDaddy when we set it up. Hello Dolly is a pretty worthless plugin. It's just there as uh, like a proof of concept for plugins. So there's a button there to delete it. You don't have to delete it at the moment, but it's it's not useful. So I would delete it at some point. The GoDaddy Quick Setup that might be useful to you, especially if you're new. The GoDaddy plugin there is just giving you this screen about get started. It's going to walk you through a few basic steps about setting up uh, GoDaddy. Uh, that is your your site on GoDaddy. Um, I usually never look at it because it's perhaps a little basic for for us, so I, I don't really look at it. But that's why we've got that screen at the front, because it's the GoDaddy Quick Setup. Akismet, 
that should sound familiar because when we were working with uh, WordPress.com, remember we were um, trying to keep spam at bay and the uh, akismet was the way that was being done. So on a self-hosted WordPress, we don't have akismet active. We have to set it up. We'll talk about it a little later, but that ties into another very useful plugin, which we'll talk about first. So at the top, we're going to add a new plugin. Go ahead and click Add New Plugin. These plugins, these mini apps, there's a bunch of them, but <coughs> most of them come from third parties. Most of them come from companies that are either giving away their plugin, selling their plugin, or somewhere in the middle on a freemium model. Have you heard of that term? Freemium. If you haven't, what that means is they give you a plugin or they give you a, a theme or they give you something for free and 99% of it is free and useful and so forth, but then the 1% of it you have to pay for it. Oftentimes that's tech support. So if you're having problems with a plugin or a theme or some add-on to WordPress, you might pay a little bit to get tech support. That's the freemium model. So these plugins that we're seeing here, yours might be different, but I, I'm seeing BuddyPress, Jetpack, BB Press, Theme Checker, etc. These are some, and there's Akismet. These are some featured plugins. There's featured, popular, recommended, favorites, and search. These plugins, for example, BuddyPress is made by the company, the Buddy, the BuddyPress community. Jetpack is made by Automatic. Theme check is made by Pros Auto 42. So different companies. This is why we did not have plugins at WordPress.com, because WordPress.com did not want to tech support every single problem from some other company. So we only get the ability to install plugins once we have a self-hosted WordPress site. For example, the one we're going to do right now uh, is Jetpack. Um, if you click on more details, it tells you what it is, what it does. It gives you all of these features. It's been downloaded 14 million times. It's got four and a half stars out of 517 um, ratings. Um, it's been updated two weeks ago. It works on our version of WordPress and so forth. So a little bit of information there. And at the top, we can see installation instructions, screenshots, frequently asked questions, and reviews, and so forth. So there's lots and lots of plugins out there because let's say we want to search for a plugin on Twitter. Uh, if we search for Twitter, we'll get a thousand plugins about Twitter. How do we know what's a good one? We look at the star ratings, the number of ratings, the number of downloads. When was it last down, uh, updated? Maybe there's a plugin that's got five stars, but it only has one review, right? It was the theme author's mother that reviewed it. Mm -hmm. And then it was not updated for a year. So maybe it's got security holes. You know, people figure out these problems, they exploit them, and your site is hacked. So a WordPress site could be hacked because it's got an old theme. It's got an old plugin. Maybe you've got a bad or weak password. A lot of reasons why your, pa your site might get hacked. But if you're using a, a theme that's been updated recently that the author is updating, if you're using plugins that are updated on a regular basis, you're more secure and a good password. This one that we're going to install, Jetpack, is actually from officially from WordPress. The company that made WordPress is, is, uh, is the company Automatic. So this is an official WordPress theme that, that works really well. We're going to set it up right now. It takes a little bit of setup, but it's a very important one. So on this screen, go ahead and click Install Now. It'll confirm or issue you want to install. Click OK. You'll get... Your web browser is going to think for a moment. You'll get some feedback, hopefully, that it'll say uh, connecting, installing, so forth. Usually we have a really good internet connection speeds, but sometimes not. Obviously it's hard to teach an internet class without the internet. We'll see if this works. If it doesn't, uh, this can, you can do this at home. 
Did this work for anyone yet? Yours worked? Okay, cool. Anyone else? How do you know? Oh, it's going to give you a screen uh, with a bunch of feedback. Let me see if I can get mine to. Seems like you guys got it, so let me see if mine will obey. Oh, mine said plug in fail. It's not fail. Plug in check. Plug in check. Plug in check. Plug in Okay, so mine, uh, my, it could be the browser, most likely not. It, it's more like the connection from your website to the WordPress uh, site. So what I would do if yours said fail, is there a button that says go back or something? Go back and try to install it again. Some of you got a screen that seems to say, let's see, some okay. chaos. So mine, mine also looked weird. I, I didn't get any feedback at all, and then I refreshed my screen, and then it said plugin installed, which is weird. It's supposed to give you a screen that says uh, successfully installed plugin, and then an uh, and then an option that says activate plugin. So you've already activated yours. Um, just to confirm all of this, let's click back on installed plugins here on the left. And on my list, I do see that mine says Jetpack there. So for some reason, I didn't get any feedback, but it did install. Google Chrome. So on mine, I have to activate mine. Mine says activate it. It should actually say activate it. It just says activate. Mine's already active. Uh, I mean, yours is probably already active, so I'm going to click activate. Actually, I'm getting a fatal error here. Hmm. Well, let me, if this doesn't quite work now, we'll have to skip it because there's other things I, I want to talk about. Let me try one more time. I'm going to add for myself, just bear with me a moment. I'm going to try to add Jetpack one more time. If it works for me, then I'll go on. If it doesn't, there's other things we'll, we'll talk about. So Jetpack is a plugin that adds extra features to your site, such as, remember, on WordPress.com, we could look at our statistics. We'll get those kinds of statistics on our site. We can get a bunch of other features. Okay, For mine, it seems to give me the screen that said successfully installed. Some of you saw this, and then you needed to click activate, which now I'll try. Okay, Jetpack is almost ready. Perfect. So again, if yours doesn't look exactly the same as mine, don't worry, I'll help you during the lab. But mine is active, and I get a big green bar at the top that says connect to wordpress.com. That's exactly what we'll do. So at the top, click on connect to wordpress.com. And that's asking for your WordPress username and password. And it's okay to type it here, of course, because you're going to be logging into your WordPress.com, and you're going to be connecting your WordPress.com account to your self-hosted uh, WordPress site here. So go ahead and log in and click Authorize Jetpack. Which must be for your website? The one you use for your WordPress.com. Okay. Yeah, exactly. That's right. So take a moment to connect that, and I'll talk about what we did or what this is about. Anyone need any help at the moment?
Okay, so WordPress, uh, when I do this for clients, this is, this is one of the first um, plugins I install because just it gives me so many great features. It gives the site so many great features. Um, we'll, I'll talk about a couple of the most important ones now, such as um, the ability to uh, add extra features, like to be able to edit your code. So I'm going to scroll down here to... Uh, let's see if you scroll down. Scroll down to where it says View All Jetpack Features. So I'm on the screen here with the clouds. Scroll down to the bottom and you'll see View All Jetpack Features. At the bottom here, View All Jetpack Features. Look at all of these things that we have the ability to do. Uh, we can have, for example, publicize. We can do um, related posts. That's a really cool one that will show you uh, more posts uh, when a person reads one post. Now, a lot of these come from WordPress.com, but they were not active, slideshows and so forth, they were not active on your self-hosted account. Well, now we have that power of the WordPress.com on our self-hosted. This is another cool one here. Monitor. That one will tell you if your site is down. It'll send you an email saying, hey, your site is not active. And then you can go check at GoDaddy or whatever problem. And then it'll send you an email once your site is up. I just got an email today that for about 30 minutes, my site was down. So how does this actually work? On the left side, this is just telling you what WordPress has. On the left side, you have a brand new category, Jetpack. And you've got Settings. So click on Settings. And then so here you see the same sorts of things we saw a moment ago, but the blue ones are active and the white ones are not active. Uh, for example, in my case, Carousel is not active. If you click on the name of the add-on, it'll tell you what this actually does. So if I click on Carousel, with Carousel active, any standard WordPress gallery you have embedded in posts or pages will launch as a gorgeous full-screen photo browsing experience with comments and EXIF metadata. Basically, it's saying this is like a pretty slideshow. All you have to do is add your pictures, and you'll have a you'll have a slideshow with, you know, back and forward buttons and all of that. That should sound familiar. We had that at WordPress.com, but we did not have that on our self-hosted accounts until we've activated Jetpack. We've got the contact form that did not come with the GoDaddy Jetpack, but We've got it here. Jetpack comments, likes, mobile theme, monitor, all of these items. So to turn on or turn off a feature of Jetpack, you just hover over and click deactivate or activate. And some of them say configure, so they have a few more settings. The ones that are default here are good, and I would say uh, turn on monitor. So hover over the one that says monitor and click activate. <coughs> because I, like I said, that's going to send you an email. Your site is going to send you an email. Uh, technically, WordPress.com is going to send you an email that your site is down. So that you always know, is there a problem with my site? That's a cool free feature of Jetpack. So just click to activate monitor and and it works. Let's see what's under config. Yeah, nothing important there. But anyway, activate monitor. What else is good? I would say also turn on Photon. Photon will speed up your site because if you've got a lot of pictures on your site, uh, when someone connects to your site, the person will have to download the picture. And when they come back to your site, most likely your web browser will have to download the picture again, meaning your site will be slow. If you activate Photon, your pictures will be put on a faster network powered by WordPress. So when someone visits your site, your pictures will download to their computer a lot faster because they're on a faster distribution network. So the technical aspect is that it's a content, content distribution network. The, 
the, the non-jargon term is your site's going to be faster. So I would activate Photon. I would activate related posts. Remember, we had that over at WordPress.com. You can kind of activate them all. They're all really good features. I'm just... Yeah, like site icon. Like if you wanted to do here an icon, like a fave icon and so forth, that one's good, a little icon for your site. So I'm saying most of these are pretty good. You, can, you wouldn't really have a problem turning them all on. Maybe you don't use them all, but that's okay. And you can turn on, for example, site icon and related posts. And at the top, select activate them. So I would click them to read them just to see what they're about. Vault Press, however, is the one you cannot activate. That one's not free. Vault Press uh, helps you back up your site. Uh, helps you, that is, by you paying them. So um, if you want to, you can, but I've never used Vault Press. So I can't really talk about it. Galleries, subscriptions, all of that stuff. So Jetpack gives you extra features. Any questions on, on that so far? We'll be looking at it more in detail as the class goes on, but at least I want to turn on Jetpack because now also if you look under Jetpack, you're going to see site stats. Click on that. And at the moment, I don't have any, I don't have any traffic under my site stats here. But eventually, this is going to give me statistics. So the sooner you set it up, the better, because it's going to keep track of who visits your site. Okay, uh, let's look at another plugin. Uh, this one is very powerful. We, we're not going to use it in depth at the moment, but it's going to be useful in the future. Let's go back, hover over plugins, and just go directly, hover over plugins, and select Add New. I'm going to add another plugin. In my uh, on Blackboard, I mentioned the plugins I'm going to talk about, but click Add a New, and at the top, search. I'm going to search for one called Duplicator. Duplicator. What this plugin does is it makes an exact copy of your site. Because your site lives in the cloud, it's on a server, it's not like a, a classic HTML or Dreamweaver site that your site is in a folder on your hard drive or your USB. Your, dream, your site is on a WordPress server in the cloud at all times. And like I said, if your site goes down, well, you'll get a notification it's down. But what if... Uh, it gets hacked or GoDaddy breaks your site or whatever. With Duplicator, you can, have an, uh, you can have a perfect copy of your site before it gets hacked, before it crashes, before something bad happens to it, and you can restore your site exactly as it was before. There's many plugins that will do this. I've used a couple of them. This is the one I use all the time for my sites and my clients' sites. So search Duplicator, press Enter. And you should see here, Duplicator from Life in the Grid. Notice it's got perfect five stars, 756 reviews, 1.1 million downloads, updated two months ago. Not so bad. If it was two years ago, I'd be worried. But this is the site that makes duplicates. I use this to make a copy of my client's sites just in case. And if anything happens, I can put the site back to normal. What was that over there? So let's go ahead and click the Install Now button. So once it installs, I'm going to select Activate Plugin. Now don't forget on this screen here, you want to then select Activate Plugin. Just because it installed doesn't mean it's actually active. You can have many plugins but then they need to be activated. So click Activate Plugin.
Once this gets activated, you'll have a brand new menu item on the left side at the bottom. Duplicator. So I'll show you briefly what duplicator is, but we'll do it more in depth later once we've got a site that really needs to get backed up. You can, of course, explore it on your own. But click on duplicator on the menu on the left. When you have a question. Mm -hmm. When you make changes to the website, it, it is going to save or buy it. Or you have to duplicate again. The point of duplicator is that, like, this is how I use it in the real world. I have a client's website, and every month or so we need to do updates. Yeah. Uh, so before we do the update, I make a duplicator backup, just in case, because that plugin, that new plugin, might actually cause problems with another plugin. I don't know. So we make a duplicator backup, we do the updates, we test it, it works perfectly great. If the site doesn't work, we restore the site with the duplicator backup, and then we deal with the problem. We also use the duplicator backup uh, if we want to move the site. If we're over at victor.com, but I want to move that to victorcampos.com, I make a copy of the site with duplicator, I set up the server, victorcampos.com, and, and then I move the duplicator site to victorcampos.com. So it's a really good plugin. It's totally free, and it makes perfect copies of your sites. It takes a few steps, and it's not that complicated. We're not going to do it fully together, but if you look at the duplicator screen here, packages are any backups you've made. There's no backups yet. We'll take a look at Create New for a moment, so click Create New tab. When you were here in this, in this one, uh -huh. I have to push the duplicator? Or the you menu? see at the very bottom left, the very last item on your menu bar says Duplicator. Click on this. So under this Create New tab here, it's going to... Uh, mine says Requirements Passed. That means that my server and, and plugins and so, so forth are properly set up. If that's a fail, it'll give you uh, a little... It'll give you help to see what's wrong with your, your server, but usually there's no problem. Uh, and then it says, what's the name of your backup? It gives me a, a name here, the date, that's fine. It gives me a place for notes, such as, uh, you know, basic site backup uh, before installing e-commerce. I don't know. I'm just making this up for the moment. I'm writing myself notes here. What's the purpose of this backup? Because as I said, perhaps once a month or so, I go in and make backups of these sites, and I make myself a note, what's the backup for? I make, a, I make a duplicator backup before I make any big changes. So it's good to make notes. And this is as far as I'll go with this because it's pretty straightforward. On the next screen, it would actually make the copy and so forth. But I'm going to leave it at this point. You can always... Um, you can always read about uh, over on help exactly how it works. Uh, that's the thing about plugins. That's why there's no plugins on WordPress.com because every plugin is different. Perhaps a plugin interacts negatively with another plugin. The ones I'm going to mention, though, I've used a lot, and I know that they're good. I know that they work. But they're all going to be different because they're different authors. They should all have some sort of help feature. So this is as far as I'll go. You want to look at help on your own, and then... Um, during lab time and so forth. I can help you individually if you want. But this is the duplicator plugin, and it works really well to make a copy of your site. Any questions on it? All right, so uh, let's go back to plugins, add new. We'll add another plugin. On the surface, this one's going to sound really boring, but it's very useful. This one's called Redirection. So search here, Redirection. Search Redirection, and you should get a result that says Redirection from the, from the author John Godley. That one's got four out of five stars, 136 uh, ratings. 
2.2 uh, million downloads and four weeks ago it was last updated. What this does, it's kind of technical, but what it does is, have you ever gone to a website? Uh, you followed a Google link or you followed an email or you typed the address and it went to an error page. It went to a 404 error page, page not found. So we don't want that on our sites. We want to deal with any broken links. This will help you deal with broken links because let's say a person goes to your website, victor.com slash about us. They typed victor.com slash about us. But your about page is actually victor.com slash about. If someone goes to about us, that's the wrong page. Error. It's not going to work. So we can use redirection to redirect people from the wrong address to the right address so there's never a broken link. This will keep track of your broken links and create these things called 301 redirects, which will direct people from the wrong address to the right address. So if you rename a file, if you move a file, if you delete a file and you get broken links, this will help you fix those broken links. As I said, kind of sounds boring, but for SEO, this is super important. You don't want your visitors to go to broken links. So select Install Now. After it installs, make sure you select Activate. The thing about plugins is that, unfortunately, they're not consistent. Notice when we installed the Jetpack plugin, it made itself a menu item at the very top. Jetpack. When we installed Duplicator, it made itself a menu item, but this one's on the bottom. We made, duplica uh, we made redirection, and I don't see it on my menu here. Well, it's actually hidden inside of Tools. Redirection. So some plugins install themselves to a menu. Some of them go into a sub-menu, oftentimes Tools. Sometimes they go into the Settings menu. So you can always find out where they're at by going back to your plugins, installed plugins, and this is a list of them all. And oftentimes you'll see settings there. So if you don't see it in the menu somewhere, maybe hunt around under tools or settings. And if you don't see them there, you can always go back to your installed plugins and you'll see settings for that plugin. Let's go to tools and select redirection. Take a quick look at it. Go to Tools menu and click that new plugin, Redirection. At the top, you've got redir Redirects, Groups, Modules, Log, 404. So Redirects would be any, um, any new rules that you create that redirect your visitors to the right place. We haven't created any, so that's empty. But the way we would use this in the beginning, you know, the first few weeks or months or whatever, is we go into this screen and we go look at the 404s, which is the technical term for broken links, file not found. We would go to that screen and it would give us a list. It would show you someone tried to visit your About Us page and it was the wrong link. So on this screen, we would then say, add a new redirect. And we would point it from the wrong address to the right address. And then it would work. It would get people to the right place. Again, a little boring but obviously super important. You don't like to go to a broken link and this will help prevent broken links. You can't do much with it. We'll have to wait a week or two till we get traffic perhaps and then we'll see how it works. Any questions on that one? This is the redirection plugin. Sometimes the firewall... The firewall. It would be the firewall. Um, but that's the firewall more for your computer. Um, this is the other way around. This is to keep track of links on your site rather than your web browser going to the wrong address. Okay. Um, we're going to set up this next one. Okay, let's go back to plugins and we'll add another one. And here we'll we'll search for SEO Yoast. Y O A S T Yoast. 
I would say it rhymes with toast. SEO, Y O A S T, Yoast. Yoast is a big famous company in the world of WordPress plugins. Uh, they have a, a variety of very useful and free plugins. And this one will, will help us uh, add more search engine optimization uh, features to our site for free. Yes, 99% of the things I'll be talking about in this class are free. So SEO Yoast, go ahead and search that. You should see this one here, WordPress SEO by Yoast from Team Yoast. It's got four and a half stars, 1,200 reviews, 16 million downloads uploaded uh, updated one week ago so, so of course you click install now install it and activate it and what this one will do is we will be able to page by page screen by screen optimize our WordPress site we will um, Getting, I'm getting to that one moment. So what this will let us do is activate these features for uh, for SEO. Uh, where did mine go? Here we go. Uh, hmm. Mine took me over here. Well, do you notice now on the left side you've got a brand new item, SEO. So uh, just so that everyone's on the same screen, go ahead and click on it. And mine isn't popping up with that, but some of you get a little pop-up at the top that says allow tracking. Uh, that's up to you. That's if you want to let the Yoast company have anonymous statistics, such as how many people have downloaded it and used it and, and so forth. It doesn't really matter but perhaps just cancel that or, or say no uh, just so that it's not um, gathering your data and like I said it's anonymous but it doesn't hurt to turn it off but this Yoast screen has a variety of screens this Yoast plugin has a variety of screens and uh, a bunch of settings and so forth we won't get to these just yet. Instead I want to show you now that if you go back to your posts, go to all posts, Yoast has activated something new. Go to posts, all posts. You should have at least one, um, one post and this has columns that are different than the default WordPress installation. For example, a little column for SEO with a gray dot, SEO title, meta description, focus keyword. This will help us to craft each page, so a page or a post in our blog, so that if I write a blog post, let's say this is Victor's Bakery, and I'm writing a, my, my monthly column on recipe of the month, and that particular recipe is a pecan pie recipe. My focus keyword of that page is pecan pies or pecan pie recipe because I want people to search pecan pie recipes and I want my page to appear. So we'll do it together a little later, but I would set the focus keyword to that page pecan pie recipes. And then it would help me step by step to optimize that page to get found by someone searching that keyword. And it would give me a rating. The gray dot means I haven't optimized it yet. A red dot would say it's got bad SEO. You haven't tried hard enough. You'll get the next one, which I think is uh, orange, which means it's a little better. And then I think a yellow one, and then the best one, a green one, which means that you followed all the steps. You've optimized that page. It's got very good SEO. So once we've got a bunch of pages and posts, we can see at a glance. I haven't optimized this one. This one needs more work. This one is perfect. And again, we'll go through this plugin in detail, but at least I want to install it now so that it's ready to use a little later. Take a quick look over on pages, and same thing. Currently, there's just an about page, and this about page should also be optimized. We, we need to set a focus keyword eventually and write a meta description and check our SEO title and so forth. 
And we'll do that, but not just yet. So that was our SEO plugin from Yoast. This is a great Pandora's box that we will work with a little later. Any questions on it? Again, you're always free to learn about these on your own before I talk about them because oftentimes there's some sort of help button like here I am uh, well actually if I go back if you go back to your SEO if you go back to your SEO screen your your Yoast SEO you will you should see somewhere uh, help button But anyway, we'll be looking at it together, uh, how to maximize the usage of this plugin. Okay, the last plugin I'll talk about at the moment is another one from Yoast. This one will tie into Google Analytics. Google Analytics is a huge topic that we'll get into, which is much more powerful statistics on your site traffic. We have the Jetpack site stats which will tell us what our most popular pages are where does our traffic come from <coughs> stuff like that important stuff but Google Analytics will tell us way more it'll tell us what country people came from how long did they stay on our site what pages did they visit when they visited our home page um, um, what else oh uh, if, uh, if traffic came from Twitter or from Facebook you know lots of statistics so that I can tell is my social media working am I being found what are the keywords that people typed to find my site that's Google Analytics so let's set up a plugin to tap into that go back to plugins add new and up here search for Google Analytics, that's A N A L Y T I C S, analytics, Yoast, Y O A S T. Question? Um, so Bing also have the same thing? Bing does, and we will talk about it, but it doesn't have a plugin, <coughs> but we can use the feature in a different way, and we'll talk about that. So, yeah, we're going to be talking about setting up our SEO with Google and with Bing because those are the two big search engines. Google, of course, is the biggest one. It's got like 60% market share. And Bing has between 15 and 18%, and you think, well, that's pretty small. If Google has 60%, why do I care about 18%? Well, that is 18% of millions and millions, if not billions, of searches. So we don't want to not deal with Bing just because it's got lower market share. It's, it's increasing, actually. And we'll talk about that later. But search for Google Analytics Yoast. And you should see right here, Google Analytics by Yoast from Team Yoast. Four stars out of uh, 289, 8 million downloads. You know what to do. Click Install Now. Don't forget to activate it. At the top of the plugins screen, you, it's reminding you to set this up. We can't quite set it up just yet. On the left side menu, you've also got a brand new analytics. So it's there as well. We can't set it up yet because we don't have a Google Analytics account. We need to create a free Google Analytics account. Then we'll connect it to our site with this plugin. And then Google We'll keep track of all of these cool stats and we'll use the stats and understand our site traffic and a bunch of stuff. But at least we've set up the plugin. So again, the purpose of this is so that it helps us to track our site traffic and so forth on Google. And knowledge is power. So these are the plugins. Again, uh, we did Jetpack. Duplicator, Redirection, SEO by Yoast, and Google Analytics by Yoast. 
there's a whole world of plugins out there. And like I said, most of them for free. There's even uh, plugins out there for e-commerce. So you can sell products. You can sell, uh, you know, like you can be your own eBay. You can sell your own, you know, electronics. Or you can sell your, your music. You can sell books, pictures, and so forth. And that's a free plugin that will help you sell your products. These are the ones I'm going to talk about in this class because they're the most useful for the purpose of this class, search engine optimization. But at least if we've got them installed, we'll, able, we'll be able to use them in the future. So uh, any general questions on these plugins? Let's Wait, take our... Yeah, go ahead. I just have one. Sorry, but then, mm -hmm. So if I have two similar, then I have to deactivate one to use the other one? Two similar plugins? Yeah, like say two types of analytics. Okay, that's a good question. So if you've got plugins that do similar things, there might be conflicts. Because Yoast SEO or Yoast Analytics is going to try to accomplish a task. And another plugin is going to try to do the same thing. So they might be accessing the same files, and that'll cause a conflict. So I would recommend if you do have two of the same one, notice you've got the option right here deactivate it. Deactivate one of them and only use the other. If they're both running at the same time, most likely you'll have problems. So let's take our first break. It's 622. Let's take a 10 minute break. We'll be back at 632 and we'll talk about setting up those Google Webmaster tools. So 10 minutes.